Today we are so blessed to have uh, our very own friend, Nene. Pastor Mose, Pastor Moses Mukisa. Lelo tu ino Mukisa guanja ulo tu ina mukwano guafe yenyini musumba Mose Mukisa. A big akalulu and a big welcome. Akalulu, akomwanguka, no kumwani zamungeli yamani. And he has traveled with the team. Uh, I, I, I don't have the right to introduce them, so he has the right to introduce his friends. And one of the things I want you to do before he comes, pull out your notebook, pull out your pen, get yourself a Bible. No, I think you should have a Bible ready. Praise the Lord. And get ready to learn, get ready to feed. And the beautiful thing is that we have session one today. Tomorrow we have another session. My goodness. And if you miss anything, if you can't understand his language, there are books there that you must buy at the end of this service. But can you now welcome with me Pastor Moses Mukisa from Washington Harvest. A big hand clap. We love you, Pastor Moses. Thank you so much, Pastor Peter. Good evening. Thank you for the pastors from Worship Harvest who are here. Worship Harvest. Harvest. Good evening. Wow. Can we appreciate the worship team? They did a great, great job. Worship team, wherever you are, thank you. Yeah, if, if you think what they do is obvious, you should get inside that box there. Uh, <laughs> Alright, he finished it for me. <laughs> It's a really great honor to be here at Gaba Community Church. You are a historical church. You are a distinctive church. And I really want, probably you're not, uh, this is not something familiar with you here at Gaba Community Church. Because we're a cool church. And, and very, you know, like sophisticated. And advanced. Hey. Uh, but I came with some people who are going to be making a lot of noise. So you bear with them. They are always excited. When, when people come to worship harvest, they keep thinking, are these people no more? <laughs> are they pretending? And after they've been around some time, then the people realize they are not pretending. But that's, I'm being diverted. I, I was telling you people of Gaba Community Church, you have a wonderful pastor. Omusumba. Yes. Special, spe a special gift. I can't hear myself in the monitors. A special gift to us as the church in Uganda, as the church in Kampala. As you have noticed, 
The people who are not from Gaba Community Church. Are more excited about your pastor. More than you. It is possible that they told you people at Gaba Community Church not to be too excited about the pastor. They told you to be very excited about Jesus. Uh, but, but let me tell you something. First of all, you must understand that every scripture must be fulfilled. Every scripture must be fulfilled. Do you know there is a scripture that says that he came to his own and his own did not receive him. That's a scripture. And having moved around in churches, I've realized that many congregations don't know how to receive their own. They are more excited about outsiders like me than they are excited about their own pastor. When I was coming here, I was listening to a, a teaching about honor which is the discernment the honor is the discernment of uniqueness distinction and value I'm going to start my message later. After the people of Gaba get excited, I will start. But when you think about Pastor Peter Kasirivu and his beloved wife and this church and the more than 400 churches that have been planted out of this church and the university that has come out of this church and a social action ministry that has come out of this church that takes care of more than 10,000 children. I don't see how you can still be seated when I'm talking about your pastor. It means that you don't see the distinction without a single scandal. The people of Gaba, if you don't receive your pastor, there are people here, including myself, who are going to receive him and take all the goodies out of him while he, you continue attending church here. From afar, we will test from a distance. You Look, we are, for us, we are, we are a church planting church. We are trying. 21 churches so far. But you, more than 400. A, 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 a what? Schools? What? Hey. 
Gaba. Abe Gaba. Okay, you guys can sit down. Can you wait to the Kowans? By the way, if you are annoyed, Boba, Gana will weigh money. If for some reason you are annoyed, be annoyed with me, 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 me. Because I was given a topic. And everything I've been saying, it's not in the topic I was given. I have quite to make it that. <laughs> I'm just excited. Yeah, amen. Amina. So, all of that to say thank you, Pastor Peter, and, and your dear wife for paving our way for many of us who have come, who are coming behind you. For being an example, a great example. You you may not know that many people are doing certain things the right way because of you. So we thank you. And we appreciate you. And if for one reason or other, if you ever wake up one morning and you feel like quitting, just call us at Worship Harvest. We will take you and give you ice cream. And give you cake. And, and shop for you. And cut the grass at your house. And even fumigate your house. <laughs> uh, just to encourage you. Because I lead something much smaller than you do. But I have experienced discouragement. And I know that when you're leading at the scale you're leading, Oh so we, we, it can be challenging sometimes. So that's why I decided to take the first part of my message. To save for us, we receive you. We honor you. We respect you. We think you are a real, the real deal. That this church is blessed to have you as their pastor. Thank you, sir. All right. I have well, there some books outside. The foremost is this book. Straightforward financial growth. Straightforward financial growth. Hey, with you. Uh -huh. the, the next three days, we are going to be talking about things in this book. We've deliberately decided to make it very cheap. So, so that everyone gets a copy. It's only 30,000 shillings. Yes. This book, the contents of this book will change your life. All right, is it, is it anyone's birthday today? Today, birthday. Anniversary. Marriage anniversary, marriage anniversary. They're pointing at someone outside. Is it anyone's birthday yesterday? What's, what's up? They've oh, forgotten. Yeah. When is the birthday? Yesterday. 
All right, this is your copy. Thank you. Happy birthday. Yoga, yoga, sebo. May your latter life be radically transformed financially. There's another book here. It's called Called to Greatness. It's one of my favorite books. Is this anyone's birthday tomorrow? Wow. How are we going to do this? Is there anyone here who is younger than 20 years? Younger than 20. Are they there or I'm seeing people jumping around? Is there anyone here you are 20 or below? But what is happening? On the camera. All right. Help me take it to the guy on the camera. Is it guy? Like oh, oh. Uh, I'm going to get you one. Eh? We're going to get one. Yes. They are bring, where are you seated? Okay, they are bringing you one. Bringing <laughs> you one. <laughs> Lastly, this book. The <laughs> last one, I'll talk about essential practices uh, for healthy church finances. There are different things you can do in your church or, or business. This works for business as well. That can help you grow financially. As, as an organization. Whether a non-profit or business or a church. This is a very important book. When we started our ministry, we used to pay 30,000 shillings a, a, a week to use the venue we were at. We never paid two weeks in a row. We will not tell you why. It's because of your but I was listening to a report this morning. Okay, where the church where I lead, which used to survive on 30,000. Let me tell you, let me think what's the relevant um, data for you. Maybe right now, the same church survives on about 150 million a week. And that money is internally generated. It, it means that we've learned something over the last 15 years. So if you run a business, an organization, or church, you need to get a copy of this book. I'm going to ask Pastor B3 to very respectfully take for me this to Pastor Peter. Thank you. You probably were wondering that people were shouting here as if they've drunk something. <laughs> they are friends from worship harvest. Many of them are pastors of churches. Big churches. Yeah, mega churches, pastors. Can I ask the worship harvest pastors to stand up? <laughs> Worship us by me. Hey, yes. Thank you. And, and may I ask all the other leaders that came with them to stand up? Thank you so much. You, you may have your seats. We have some friends here from Nairobi, Matt and Teleria. 
They, they came for the Proclaim conference, which was awesome. You're welcome. This is Gaba Community Church. There is the word community. So we do community things first, introducing what. Then we get into the gist of the matter. I sent some slides. I don't know how they work on this board. Which is, uh, you can format them to just fit in the middle. You don't have to fill the screen. Like my picture may make me look fatter than I actually am. <laughs> I am the last of six children. I am the last of six. Hey, By the way, uh, the rest of you, the, the, like, do yourself a favor and have fun. Yeah. yeah, like, I'm not going to switch off my joy because you are there seated like, like you didn't eat lunch. No, 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 no. I have to maintain my joy levels, whether you're engaged or not. You can't even scare me because Pastor Peter called me himself. Hey. I am the last of six children. Nze muto mubano mukaga bazaliwa. Mukama yebazibwe. Mu praise the Lord. Now, when I was 8 years, when I nemya ko munana, my dad was shot. Data wange yali mumpi. Ya ya ba mukuba masasi na. Eh, ba mukuba masasi. <laughs> no, my dad wasn't short. Hey, Te <laughs> let, let me try again. Can zile munati. When I was eight years old, my dad was shot. And he, and he died. Yeah. And so we started a very difficult life. We were in the village. And uh, my mom Mama. was a primary school teacher. In the village. What are the odds that I would make it out of there? If it wasn't for God. You see that? Now, what happened is that because we lived in the village, the only way to get a better education was go to a boarding school. So after my mom had struggled a little bit, with a lot of help from many people, she finally took me to boarding school in P4. When I got there, she gave me pocket money. The idea behind the pocket money was for it to take me the whole until she came to visit. However, by the time I went to bed that night, on the first day, The money was gone. Saint Nezibula. Neta. Tezabula. It was spent. 
Yari asa asa nyiza na zigwa wo. Musawa musawa. It's been long since I preached and interpreted someone, so I'm having so much fun <laughs> with all the different permutations that could come out. So I, I spent all the money in one day. No, not one day. One afternoon. One afternoon. One afternoon. I proceeded to study. I changed schools. I went to another school. I finished P7. I went to senior secondary. Oliver. My mom used to pay my school fees using potatoes, beans, and other such items. She, she would take to the school. Then I went to A level. And I went to Oliver. Oliver was my school. And I went to Oliver. And I went to and miraculously, I passed my exams. It was a miracle. Because my mom died two weeks to my final exams. And I wasn't performing well in school. In fact, the mock exams. They had remocked me. <laughs> so when my mom passed, I knew that I needed a miracle. And God gave me a miracle. I was the fourth best student in the country. I still have the newspaper in my wallet now. Yeah. You see, some people forget where God has brought them from. That's why you don't experience multiple miracles. God does things and you think that you are entitled. <laughs> so I went to the university for to study architecture. In my class, when I go to class that day, there were six students who were in the top ten in my class. Either top ten sciences or top ten arts. There were two from arts and four from sciences. Such was the concentration of academic demagogues. <laughs> I knew it was an act of God. I didn't, I could, I didn't belong there. It's God who put me there. Yeah. So I studied and finished five years. Uh, it was a five year course. We need to go for a drink with this guy after. <laughs> so, five years. Then I left and started working. And I worked. I worked. I worked. I worked. I worked. Hey. Have you ever worked? Even until you feel like I am a diligent what? Are there any people here who work hard? Let me see that. Hard workers club. You know there are some questions which they, uh, when they ask you, just put your hand up. You, you don't think too hard about it because your boss, your boss may be around. 
And they say that you didn't put up your hand when I talked about those who are hard. Anyway, nine years after, nine years into my work life, how many of you know nine years is not a short time? I attended an event like this where people were gathered. Christians. And someone came the way I have come today and talked about personal finances. By the end of his one hour talk the way I am going to do today it hit me. <laughs> I realized <laughs> that I was broke. I was broke. I had nothing to show for my nine years of work. Yeah. Yeah. And Pastor Peter, I've gone around training people. In churches and in companies, big corporate organizations, and I found the story to be consistent. Many people have worked many years, but they have nothing. 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 <laughs> yeah. When I did my net worth. It was slightly below zero. I didn't have anything. And I said, what? I said, what? Then when I checked with my friends, I found that we were in the same category. Hey. Big titles. Architects. What? No wealth. So I started educating myself. Do you know why I had nothing? Is it because I'm stupid? Didn't I tell you that I was in a class where the six, the six students were in the top ten? So it wasn't for lack of intelligence. The Bible says my people perish not for lack of intelligence. Not for, not for lack of anointing. Not for lack of faith. It's for lack of knowledge. All those years I went to school there was not even a single lesson about personal finance. Of all the churches I attended in that whole time, and I was a Christian for a long time, there was not a single service or a single conference or a single class to tell me that when you make money this is what you do with it. So nine years into my work life the operating system 
which was operating in P4 was still the operating system as an architect. You says that the money was more, but the process was the same. You get it? Total wipe out. What <laughs> you so the process of self-educating resulted in this book, Straightforward Financial Growth. And many, many people have learned a lot of things. If you can take me to three types of education on, on the slides. Three types of education. You just keep clicking, you reach. You will tell me if we reach three types of education. Click, 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 click. No, you're too far ahead. Uh, okay. Wow. So there are three types of education. The first is general education. You, you go to school. You learn how to play with your friends. You, you learn how to socialize. Okay. If you only do uh, uh, homeschooling, you don't get that. And then you, you learn how to think, how to count, how to write, and all of that. Typically, you get, you get out with a, a bachelor's degree. Now you can, then you can start to read it. Find out what you want to do. So after that, there is the specialized kind of education. Where you study and learn more and more about less and less. Like Dr. Emmanuel Okulo here. He's not just a doctor. Mm -mm. He's a, a, a gynecologist and obstetrician. And obstetrician. And not just a gynecologist and obstetrician. He specialized even more. And became an embryologist. And so when you get this kind of specialist education, you find that there are very few of you. So you are compensated highly. So for example, uh, uh, heart surgeons. Hmm? You know, we all of us here, we can remove your heart. Yeah, we can remove, it's, it can be gross. And tough, but we can remove it. Now, where the challenge comes, putting it back and getting it working. 
You may find that there is no one in the room who can do that. Maybe there might be only one person. There are very few people who can remove your heart, put it back, and it works. <laughs> so that's called what? Specialized education. The last kind is, the, is financial education. This is a very it's very interesting because it's not very high specialized education. But it is not there in school. It's as if someone conveniently forgot. That one day you'll finish school start working and they're going to pay you this thing called money. And what do you do with it? That's why my friends you find there's a lot of well-educated broke people. Yeah. Because you can be a great doctor and broke. You, you can be a great architect like me and broke. You may have st studied all those complex things in school. Can I tell you some of your topics you studied? Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Shaka Zulu. Baba Samesa Kuba Shaka Zulu. Eh? Maji Maji Rebellion. Baba Igiza Kumaji Maji Rebellion. Empire of Mali. Ghana. Oyo. Eh? Canadian Prairies. Archimedes Principle. Mm. Love Flotation. Amate. Covalent Bonds. Eh? The Y D X, Nayenga Cash. Wow. Oh, so we are going to have some maybe. Nayenga sent us to go to Miyanga and Yangalo. Zakulemo kunyeza. Look, academic excellence does not guarantee financial uh, well-being. Kati o kubanga wa some anyo mu some no itirira. Kati so we are kaka santi obramuwo obabuli joko jako bwe yagaza na damu biyefuna. Let me take it further. You might say, ah, ah, it's not academics that guarantees financial success. You, you, might, might, say, you might say it is the Lord. No, 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 no. If that was the case, all the balokole would have all the money. Yeah. But the, why is it that money seems to run away from us? And yet we know the Lord. In the Bible, there was a man who was a prophet. One of the sons of the prophets. That means he could even see the future. He knew the Lord. But he didn't know about money. So he borrowed. And he died. And his two sons were going to become slaves. So he can be a Christian. Who loves the Lord with all your heart? <laughs> <laughs> and broke.
you know how it was in class the brightest students sat at the front. The worst students, the noisemakers, sat at the back. Many years later, when you're getting onto an airplane, where you sat in the class doesn't determine where you sit on the plane. You find yourself passing all the noisemakers. They are in business class. While they take you to your seat 47E somewhere back there near the kitchen. Why? Is it because you are a bad person? Is it because you are not intelligent? Is it because you lack faith? Is it because the Lord doesn't like you? It's because of something you don't know that they do. I'm dealing with misconceptions about money today. Because right. by the way, these three, these five, six days. These six days as you come here for Money Matters Conference. Catch something. Don't just come for another conference. To get more information. Catch something. Because all the people that will be speaking here they will be speaking out of experience. In other words, they sort of carry a spirit of the thing they are talking about. So catch something. Yeah. Receive impartation from the people who will be speaking here. Now, hey, I wish my clock was counting downwards because I'm, I'm trying to figure out when exactly I started, but that I will be helped. Now, uh, there are issues like misconceptions, like money is the root of all evil. Is money the root of all evil? Is that what the Bible says? What does it say? The love of money is the root of all evil. So you don't have to have a lot of it to love it. The last time you saw someone else's car which you coveted, it you didn't have it. Do the other misconception. Rich people are shady. Nti abagaga bakodo. Ah, shady. Valina. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. Like the only reason they are rich is because they've done something wrong. When you think like that, you are saying that the devil is a better uh, what? A better provider, more willing than God. Other people say that money leads to temptation and sin. I don't think so. Money doesn't change you. It simply reveals who you were all along. If after you get some money, 
That's when you leave your wife. Rogama Banango Mutuka Wonekumuchara. And you go get other women. No Sarawa Funi no Mucharo Murala. It means that's what you wanted to do all along. Chita Geza, Echochova Dorina Mutima and Golinda Chisera Kutuka. You just couldn't afford it. Rokwanga Dorina Simis Sudida. Uh, are you there? Muluamu nanga kunsonge. Do they allow truth talking around here? Muki is about to abogera masimo. Oba, you want us to just be as if as if. When you get money, if that's when you become puffed up, but anukoku uli danti kachori wa chitaro. And you you distance yourself from your friends. No bera ngo la bangeje mi kwano chote chia kusana. It means that's what you have always wanted to do. But you stuck with them because now you are still depending on them. Now that you don't need their help, you can run away from them. Money doesn't change people. It reveals who they are. A lot of money in the hands of an evil person can do a lot of evil. Sente, Bezidi, Obunji, Mikono Jomu, Tomubi, Zimuletero, Koro, Bibunji. And a lot of money in the hands of a righteous person can do a lot of good. A lot of Sente, Bezayongero, Kubele, Nyingi, Mikono Joyo, Mutu, Kirifu, Akoro, Bunji, Bunji. I don't, I don't know the budget for Africa Renewal Ministries. Simani budget, Yachitongo, Africa Renewal Ministries, Zibuedi. But I don't think it's small. Now, if, if for some reason one of you went to see Pastor Peter, and you told him, I'm going to give you 10 times the budget for Africa Renewal Ministry. Budget. Do you think they would continue doing exactly the same amount of work they've been doing? With, a, with 10 times the resources. You'd just have to think you are going to do 10 times the work, right? May the Lord actually promote you Mukama to that place abakuze abatuse mu kifecho where you'll walk to pastor peter one time and say musumba bono tambulo gendero musumba pito mugai musumba here is 100000 dollars kwata yo dollar chikumi here is 200000 waliwo dollar emitwala abiri emitwala abiri here is 300000 emitwala asatu that, that's how we're going to do it, by the way. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I know you're receiving the things I'm saying. In two years. In two years. In two years. You are going to see resources coming out of here for the work here. Mugenda Kurabo, Gabirizi, Obebiko Sevanga, Buja Jemuri, or Romilim. From here, Najifano, from here, Najifano. Yeah, you'll be surprised. Mugenda Kuwuni, Kuwuni Siwa. If you thought money is in America, Bemanda was on the center in America, you are going to see Ugandan money. Mugenda Kuraku, same be as Vamba, Uganda. Yeah. And you'll be like, eh, Mugat. But you don't even see me one of Uganda with it. Yes. Chija Beun, yes. Yes. Chisoboka. It's time. Church is said. It's time. Church is said. It's time. Church is said. Take me to Genesis 26. Lubele Berie, Abidim Mokag, 12 to 13. Okuva, Kuruni, Rekumine, Biokuka, Rekumine, Sat. Let's first leave the misconceptions and talk about the right thinking. Have you ever heard of the statement, filthy rich? 
Stinking rich. Mugaga Mavundo. Where do you think it comes from? Why is it that to be rich you must also be stinking and filthy? Where did it come from? It's designed to keep you not desiring to be truly wealthy. And yet in the kingdom we need money. Because of the time I have left, I'm going to really crush a lot of the things I want to say. But let's just start here. I have found that in the scriptures, every time God showed up, he showed up with abundance. And every time the devil showed up, he showed up with scarcity. In the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us God created the world. And he saw that everything was good. Everything was good. He blessed the Adam and Eve. And say to them, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth. And then the serpent showed up. Oh, now the ground will not work the way it was supposed to work. Instead of just multiplying, you'll be sweating to multiply. That's why very few people be attain greatness. They are not that many people who are willing to work the system and break that curse of, of limitations. That's why there are so many small businesses. And very few really prosperous big businesses. That's why there are so many small churches. And very few big churches. Am I making sense? It's because when the devil shows up, he messes the system. When God came to Abraham, he became very wealthy. Isaac was wealthy. Jacob was wealthy. The children of Israel, when God moved and they were leaving Egypt, they left with all the wealth of Egypt. And yet when they were in bondage, they were broke. They were working like slaves. And when they started that great nation, Israel, every time they had a king who was righteous and encouraged the nation to follow God, they prospered. Every time they turned to a false god, they suffered. There was scarcity. They never had enough. At one time, after the nation had been divided, in the northern kingdom of Israel, the king was walking on the wall of Samaria. And he found two women arguing. And said, what's the problem? And they said, one said, this one 
We agreed to eat my baby yesterday. And the agreement was we would eat her baby today. But she is refusing for us to have deep fried baby uh, cubes. Kakati wuna mkwe se. Atume so kulia kuchipusi. Enkalide ezo mwano no. Tufenjala. By the time people are eating their own babies. Abandata ni kokulia banaba we mumpalo weba tio. That's what the devil can do. Buat yo sitani. Buatabangule mbeda. For those of you who think that the devil gives wealth more than God, you are deceived. There is a nation called the United States of America. They have their own fair share of problems. But their founding fathers believed in God. They even wrote on their money, in God we trust. It's the wealthiest nation in the world. One hour flight away from that nation. There is another nation called Haiti. Haiti. They are the official national religion of Haiti is voodoo, which is witchcraft. It, it's, it's one of the poorest. It's like in the bottom three or bottom four. Now, how can you be one hour from America? And be poorer than Uganda. And be poorer than one hour. I remember reading a joke where the Nigerians were saying if Nigeria was where Haiti is. <laughs> But they are that close and that broke. Because of their, that dedicating their nation to the devil. Let's read together this verse up. You think you can read? Genesis 26, 12 to 13. Uh -huh. Then Isaac sowed in that land and ripped in the same year a hundredfold, and the devil blessed him, right? What happened? Mm. The Lord blessed him. Oh, come on. Why, 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 why did he reap a hundredfold? The Lord blessed him. It's the Lord. Bible says in Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Not average. And adds no sorrow with it. It says, and the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Began, continued, became. Began, that's level one. Continued. You know, it's easy to make some money once in a while. It's another thing to sustain wealth. It's one thing to start a church. It's another thing for the church to be here or after all these years like Gaba Community Church. And then he says, until he became 
very prosperous. Bible yagamba ndio kutusa na gagawala nyo. Who started it all? Ani atandika? The Lord blessed him. Mukama yamuwo mukisa. Are, are you okay? Muliwa munangi. Now the verses that are not on that screen which follow say that for he had possessions. Bible yegamba munyiriye zidirirawo kubanga yalina ebintu binji. We are not talking about this prosperity of Balokole. Anchitwala, I claim it. What? No, 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 no. He had what? Possessions. He had what? Possessions. Yeah, we are this week we are not going we are not here to talk that prosperity of the sky. We are here to talk real stuff. Real money. Real income. Real savings. Real assets. Real cash flow. The next two days I will not talk as much as I've talked today. Either come with a calculator on your phone. Come with a pen. I will bring the papers. We are going to do calculations. Yeah. Yeah, because we balokole, we like talking phantom money, which is not there. Phantom money, phantom money, we lift our chairs. What? No, hey. no, 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 he said he had possessions. You must have possessions. You can't be like me who worked nine years and had not a single possession. You are not Gloria Copeland said something phenomenal. She said, Yagamba, when people die, some people leave wills, others leave bills. I was on my way to leaving a bill. But we are here to help one another. <laughs> to be truly prosperous people. Give me that next verse. 2 Corinthians 8 9. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, next slide. My goodness. Hallelujah. This is the year of. Repositioning. Mm -hmm. I, I receive it. Yes. Hallelujah. No, on, on those, 2 Corinthians 8 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty do, do you understand that scripture? It's in English. He became poor. That you through his poverty might become rich, might be made rich. Yeah. Jesus. Now, typically when people want to excuse themselves from the truth of scripture, they start spiritualizing things. 
I think this is spiritual riches. How many of you have ever paid your rent using spiritual riches? The children, the children we take care of are African Radio Mysteries. Do we use spiritual riches? The, Pastor Peter, when he has the AGM, does he tell members now for feeding, feeding, we used X number of spiritual financial units. Yeah, let me ask you. Did Jesus ever become spiritually poor? Hmm? Mbuza. Yeah, this, we're not talking spiritual things. You see, the landlord will chase you while you're there quoting the scriptures. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny the things we believe God for in church. Which the heathen, they just go and pay. For you are fasting, the other one is paying. You are believing God for a car. Some guy who doesn't even tithe. He just gets money and goes to the bond and pays. You, you are still believing. Ah, uh, uh, mm. we must stop this stuff. Now to be the care with you. Mowli Devanang. Are you with me? You people. Abu Ruganda. We 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 are going to do something. Do you know who are to We are going to do something radical radical. To gain the cola. By understanding how money works. Now, oh, I'm out of time. So I want to use my last six minutes to talk about the why. Why? Deuteronomy 8.18 you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is He who gives you the power to get wealth. That He may establish His covenant which He saw to your fathers as it is this day. That covenant was to the fathers of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Which was that the, through them and their seed, there would be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. Not just a blessing to Israel. To all the nations of the earth. Paul states in Galatians 3.8, and the scripture for saying that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Gentiles. Not Jews. Preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand. Saying, in you, all the nations would be blessed. And then it says, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. In verse 29 of the same chapter, he says, if you are Christ's, in other words, if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise of being a blessing to all the nations of the earth. But what on earth is the blessing? Psalm 133 says, Zaburi, chukumi, And there the Lord commanded the blessing. 
And there the Lord commanded the blessing. Not a blessing. The blessing. Life forevermore. The blessing is eternal life. The purpose of wealth is to take eternal life to all the nations of the world. Our good friend, Pastor Gerard Mwebe. I'm sure Pastor, uh, uh, Pastor Peter knows him well. He's, he's, an, he's a passionate evangelist. I once asked him, how much does it cost you to do one crusade campaign, like for a week? And he said it takes him 30 million shillings on average. And then I asked about how many people would give their lives to Christ in a campaign that costs that much. And he said about 3,000 people. So 30 million divided by 3,000. It means that every soul costs 10,000 shillings. In that ministry. The purpose of money, friends, is to purchase souls. It's to purchase souls. So the more money you have, the more souls you can buy. I want to propose you that in my little experience in ministry, I have not seen anywhere where souls are free. Are there any people here? They are free. Souls are free. Souls must be purchased. Setting up churches. Doing evangelism. Discipling those who get saved. Deploying them to go and lead more people to Christ. It all costs money. There's a certain religion I will not tell you about. They have built their houses of worship everywhere. Along the roads, between 2000 and 2010, they built a new one on every village in Uganda. In Uganda. And can I tell you, none of them are Chiwempe ones. None of them is in a valley somewhere. None of them is, is, is somewhere hidden where you have to look, border, border, stage, what? They are all on the road. Built. Built. Finished. Plastered. Painted. Stuffed. Cars. Batekamunsimbi. So if you are the kind of person where when I talk about money, you're just thinking about your car house, your car plot, your car, your fuel, your school fees, what? You are, you are in the wrong meeting. You are in the wrong meeting. Those are things people do without too much hassle. Even non-Christians can do that. I am here to encounter people. I don't know. I might be misled. 
I yeah. just feel like in this room right now, we can actually raise 100 million shillings for Africa in your ministries. Yeah. Yeah. Can't we? Okay, yeah. I have 5 million. Who wants to join me? In, at a million, in time, we get who, 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 if you have a million and above, just come. I need the paper. Uh, uh, say, so, so you are, so I, I, I am an, an action game. preacher. Bampolo, Papula, please come. Florence, quickly, quickly. Yeah. Pastor B3, start writing. Mose, one, five. Buliomo. Jangu, one, one, please. Because we, we, we can't, I, want, I don't want us to talk things here. I don't want to just talk, talk. We mean kingdom business. Ngatuogera, kubi interview of Wakabaka. One million and above, you just come quickly, quickly, quickly. My time is up. Right now, it's, up. it's time for questions and answers. So, five, four, three, four, even if you have ten, you can bring. It, it, we don't need it cash, it's not immediate. But you have to give it to us soon. This business of us calling you several times to remind you to jump this over. Come, come. I'm expecting some people from Gaba Community Church to come here because I've so far seen a few Gaba Community people and lots of worship harvest people. We are your guests. This is your ministry. No one should leave a name there without a phone number. Yeah. We mean business. We mean business. We mean kingdom business. So, you know, don't miss the impartation of this night. I don't do these kind of things. I don't. The longer I preached, the more I thought we cannot make a mockery of this message. Wow. Yeah. To, to be taken much evidence. Mpatoto, mpatoto. Zendaba mo chikumi wano. Ndabi yemu chikumi. Bansasile. And I know Gaba is not that kind of church where they extort money from people. No. I know. I know. I have so many friends from here. Even people who have planted churches. And I know your kind of church. I know your pastor. I know his heart. His heart is just to give, 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 give. Okay. Yeah. Please, I want, I want us to mean business. You know, Musumba, we are building. You visited us. Thank you for blessing us with uh, your visit. Musumba, Manitu Zimba, Watucha Arida, Watuwa Nyomuksa, Webari Nyom. This year, we decided to embark on four building projects. Okay, whatever you have, just come and, whatever you want to give, come, come and give. Please, come, come and give. Yeah, just tell them name, phone number, amount. Name, phone number, amount. These people, you see, these worship harvest people? These are very young people. They are not, in the world's eyes, supposed to have a lot of money. But just between January and now, these young people have already given 1.8 billion towards the building project. Yeah. Ugandan money. And I'm believing God that a time will come when people are giving 100 billion, 200 billion, 300 billion. Yes, why? We mean business with the gospel. Yeah, that's why I'm passionate about your personal financial success. Because once you are able to handle money well, uh, the things you are going to do for the kingdom. feedback. My time is up. It's Q and A. I think I'm going to have to take Q and A while we are doing this. She said that Okay, uh -huh, thank you. More people are helping out. Yes, questions.
Can I take some questions? All right. Questions, questions. Ayechi buzo, buza. I tell as people ask questions. You go there. I'm not going to do this tomorrow and the other. This is the only chance. In fact, you may find that no one in the week will even, might even do what I've done because I might even be ordinarily out of order, but I feel I'm in total order right now. Ah, uh, you know, say that you know, 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 because I know that uh, arm uses a lot of money. Put up your hand if you, want, if you have a question, put up your hand. Okay, there's, a question there. there's a question there. Uh, there's another one here. Let, let's start with those two. Thank you, go ahead. Thank you, Musumba Moses, for your wonderful presentation and for firing us up. Um, what, what did you invest in first when you started investing? What was it that you invested in first successfully? As an individual? Yes. All right. You're going to hear lots of terrible, terrible uh, loss-making investment stories tomorrow. Mm. No, on the other day. I'm asking Loss. the first successful one. OK. Can I have some s sound of that mic in the monitor? Because oh, I have to come to near to the speakers monitor. to hear. Uh, I, I did what most Ugandans do. Real estate. Uh, Real estate is very slow investment. It's very stable, but very slow, very low returns. It is, you have to know what you're doing. But because I'm an architect, I felt confident to go that direction of real estate. Well, it's better to do real estate than do nothing. But I like to say that if you're doing uh, investment, 60% of your investment have to be low risk, low return, which is mostly real estate. Then about 30% are medium risk, medium return, which is mainly financial instruments, bonds, treasury bills, uh, mutual funds. And then only 10% should be high risk, high return. That's equity and all those nice, dangerous things. Everyone should have one of those, Good just job. to keep you aware, uh, economically awake, uh, because uh, they also bring good returns. Uh, <laughs> I hope that sort of helps. Mm. That, that's now the, the format I've come up with that I use. And, and and try to help too. Great. Can we have another? There was a hand of a gentleman right here in the middle. Let's take that and then uh, let's, let's start here since he's near you and then we'll okay. move to him. Thank you, Pastor Moses. Yes. In what you have shared with us, you said after nine years you had nothing to show. Totally. Please elaborate that. Like no plot of land. Yes, no, I, I mean that. Nothing. Nothing. No plot, no shares. Even my small farm, I, because we were few, we didn't have NSSF. So not even the first saving of NSSF. No saving, no plot, no equity, no stocks, no bonds, nothing. Like, no, then think. Okay. Okay. In, those, in those nine years, uh, uh, during that time, were you married before? Of course. Hey. I, I had a wife and two children wow. already. Yeah, I had responsibilities. <laughs> you can't believe that such people exist. <laughs> we are many. We are, I, I, do you want me to take a survey right now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there's, there's, oh, he already has a mic. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, this is what she got home. I want to thank you, Pastor Moses, of the good language you're putting us and uh, bring, uh, in fact, uh, trying to bring so much when how to the business. Uh, well, my question here is one thing, though it could push a little bit behind. 
to group again what I'm going to ask her. Many days, this affects us in many businesses when we start off. Actually, my question is that I uh, want to get to understand the difference between the business we do and the one who is doing the business. I, as a food, the two things are not the same thing. This fails to understand what we're doing in the field because the, the lesson you have tonight is like changing us from the former things we're doing which are not right to something much more bigger because we're going to expand this as we go with the lessons through the week. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think tomorrow and the other day I'm going to deal with a lot of the technical stuff. Tonight I was just touching on mindsets, faith, and stuff like that. So allow me to deal with that question tomorrow once we start the calculations Thank you, and sir. explanations going to come out ni Th nicely. Thank you. Uh, what do we have? 38.9 million. That's only 40%. Yeah, so Zidi Kumpi Anakuchi Kumi. We'll Zawa. add 10 million for Ashi Pave. So at least we are 50%. Now, mm -hmm. I, I need, guys, guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. you people. Mm -hmm. We are too many in this room to fail to raise 100 million. Maybe there is something I need to understand. But I'm, I'm here for three days. So, you can think about it as you come tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Let, let, let's, uh, my, in these three days, I'm here. Let's at least raise a hundred million for Africa Renewal Ministries. Just this three. By the way, don't, 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 don't look down on your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Gaba, we are blessed. We are a blessed people. Yes. So, so we have to understand how blessed people operate. Do you know That's how you they know. operate? The whole time they are seeing resources from heaven. Yeah, and they are right here. So, mm. really, 100 million these three days, we, we need to raise it. Yeah. If you feel like, hey, bring your friend who has it tomorrow. Tell, tell him, take, let me take you to a guy who will teach you how to make money. I have a friend here, Florence, Pastor Florence Senyonjo, and uh, her beautiful, rather handsome, tall, dark, rich husband. You, know, you see that couple there? Between the two of them, they used to make one million shillings a month. And of course, they struggled. And all their mar marriage co conversations were not good. They came into our coaching system. In, in six months, they had gone to making 10 million a month. So, the things I'm telling you. We are not talking those air, air things of what, shout, no. It's practical. If you, know, if you know someone who is not here tonight, make sure they are here tomorrow. Because we are starting the practicals. We are going to lean in. You people, all those sinners who are drinking, even now you go, the bars are supposed to be closed, but they have packed the whole, they have blocked streets. They have all the money. We are here. We are here trying to feed children, build churches, build universities. What? And, and all the other guys seem like they are controlling. No, 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 no. Nedda. No. I, that one, I refuse. That one, I refuse. Yeah. Yes. That shall not happen. We are going to. Over time, rather put right to the economic order in this nation. People of faith must walk in the anointing of our Father Abraham, who the Lord blessed in all things. So I'll see you tomorrow.